around the entire country that have followed up on that, followed the same logic from the Norton case, which is a Seventh Circuit case uh, out of Illinois. And so, um, uh, based upon that, uh, the recommendation is that is that we eliminate uh, shortwoods existing handling code is now being um, out of step with the current interpretation of the Constitution. Um, but if, if you do have an individual who is being aggressive or harassing individuals on the street or is uh, doing something inappropriate such as impeding traffic or anything like that, you still, of course, have the opportunity to regulate that behavior by issuing a citation for this sort of conduct or any of the other ordinances that are available to the Charlotte Police. So um, we, we're making, I'm making this recommendation to uh, ensure that we don't run into a situation where a municipality would be potentially have legal action taken <coughs> because we issued some of the citation um, um, and to enforce a handling ordinance that seems now to be out of step with the interpretation of the Constitution. Just to, just to kind of... Uh, just to kind of be a lawyer here. Um, yeah, I remember, you know, going, going way back to law school, Chris Bruni is, is, I think it's narrowly tailored to achieve a compelling state interest. Correct. Um, so your statute would have to be narrowly tailored uh, to achieve a compelling interest. So to pass that bar, which is extremely high, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult bar to meet. So. And what a lot of the other municipalities that have tried this have looked at as well. Um, you know, how, how narrowly can you tailor it? Of course, it still says, nah, not narrow it's enough, and that's the problem. And then, once if you get it so narrow that you say that um, you know it's aggressive behavior related to X, Y, and Z, then you're already then you're already in a situation where you should be regulating that under mm -hmm. your um, other ordinances related to disorderly conduct, so that no one can claim that you um, violated their constitutional rights by impeding their speech, which is as you know said that asking for money and that's protected speech. So. We think that the best path forward is to eliminate this, and we'll continue to monitor the development of the law. And if uh, if there is a municipality out there that uh, uh, somehow magically passes the strict scrutiny test, um, you know, we'll come back and say, well, the courts have held this to be enforceable, and here's here's something you can take a look at. But until that happens, I think the best path forward is to do this. And we can also see if there's really any change day to day in our response to uh, calls or conduct. I'd make a motion to approve an ordinance repealing section 409-3 from the village uh, going to show the municipal code. I'll second that. Any discussion? Any comments? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All those in favor? I apologize, of course. Trustee Perkins. Aye. Trustee Warren. Aye. Trustee Black. Yes. Trustee Mack. Trustee Mendoza. Yes. We now have a new ordinance. Moving on to 9C, consider 2019 Human Resources Manual. Mr. Burkhart. Hello. Um, so for new board members, just a 30 second um, setup. Every year at the end of the year, I will bring uh, HR manual changes uh, for you all to consider. Uh, throughout the year, I work with department heads and staff to kind of compile a list um, that we kind of go through at the end of the year. Uh, the other thing that we do is based on COLA that you approve in the budget, we will amend um, the pay ranges uh, based on that COLA. Um, so that's another thing that is included um, I talked with Trustee Mocker this morning, and he had one or two questions that I just wanted to clarify with you. Uh, first, in the memo you'll see uh, we had originally something on workspace decorations. We decided to take uh, that out, um, uh, waiting for the Human Relations Commission to make a recommendation on holiday decorations and that. So um, there's nothing in the manual on that. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to clarify um, was uh, Trustee Marker wanted to um, inquire about some additional language, the whistleblower um, section on page 17, which basically, it, um, and I'll, I'll pass this around right now, um, but it was just stating that if something happened uh, with your direct super or immediate supervisor um, that you wouldn't necessarily have to report it to them first, but you could go to the village manager and 
that situation. Um, so that was just well, one additional line that I included. Um, so if you just want to take one and pass it around, you can see just that uh, amended language, uh, just to clarify that section. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, I think in general, with the communication policy that you just passed, first of all, I think that's going to help a lot of the communication throughout the organization when it comes to your role as an elected official, uh, us as staff, as department heads, with the village manager, and frontline staff here in the organization. So I think with that, is what, uh, you know, with the communication policy that you passed tonight, sections one through three, as well as the language in section F here in the HR manual, they kind of go together a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the general uh, thought. Uh, Rebecca, I don't know if you wanted to make any other additional comments to that, but I, I think in general, you know, we're hoping that those two kind of sync up well together. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't recall specifically on that. I know in the communication plan, we talked, I remember we talked a little bit like if we have a question for, if I had a question for you, for example, yeah. or we're talking about something, yeah. um, or the route collector who stops and that happens to see me in the alley and talks to me about something, you know, um, I, I just, I, I mean, I, I get how in any organization there needs to be lines of control, you know, but at the same time, um, and to do our jobs, we need to be able to uh, communicate with more than just down the line of yeah. supervisory control. You know? Yeah, I think it's one thing that you're, yeah, if you're talking about the route collector happens in general conversation, you know, that's something, right? But like, you know, I think about the email policy and if you email a question directly to like myself or Mark or something, you know, I think that's something that, you know, Rebecca and the board, you know, you want to be, you know, I think that's a good thing for the organization, but you know, I think we'll also want to make sure that, you know, understanding the chain of command, that we want to make sure like Rebecca would be copied on that email. So, you know, she's knowing the communication that's happening. So if a trustee, another trustee has a similar question, you know, she's aware of the communication that's happening with another board member. Um, so she can, you know, do her job to communicate that to all of you effectively. Um, so I think that's just, you know, kind of a general point that we have. You know, it's also, you know, if there's a, you know, kind of to the whistleblower policy too, you know, it's just once again encouraging that if we have a frontline staff person that has, an, you know, uh, um, a, a concern, we want to encourage them to go to their supervisor. We don't necessarily want, um, you know, we want to acknowledge that because that's a good growth opportunity too for our department heads to be able to have that relationship with uh, the frontline staff and work out that issue with them. So, well, I mean, I'll give you an example. There's a lot of components. So, here. like that, um, there was a resident that we were taking a code enforcement action against. Okay. And um, and I I was concerned about you know the impact that might have on that person. So I talked to Elizabeth Price about it. Mm -hmm. 
and she was like, oh, I'm glad you brought that up, and she had some similar concerns, and we ended up having a meeting about it with the North Shore Health and Code Enforcement, and, you know, just kind of setting my fears to rest, you know, to some extent, but I guess, um, is this... This, this hopefully would not defer from that. Okay. Is that your question? All right. Because, you know, she maybe Elizabeth had a concern, but she would take it to Rebecca, and Rebecca might say, okay, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's issues that I think come up to us in such a small community that sometimes uh, we may want to, you know, maybe may like, a, I mean, Chris at that time could have said, I support this code enforcement, I don't, and I don't want there to be any further discussion with a trustee or anyone about options. So, anyway, I, I just bring that up as an example. I don't know if anyone else has a similar concern, it was just me. I mean, your, your concern is that there's not like that fluid, that there would, would not be that kind of fluidity of, as, as needs arise in, arise in a small community that you have that sort of mobility to, to navigate. Well, I mean, I, I mean, like when I had that conversation with Elizabeth, you know, she, she, may, have, I, she may have raised that concern already mm -hmm. and been told, no, <laughs> right? Sure. You know, but when, and she wouldn't come to me and say, but I came to her and said, gee, this worries me. And she said, yeah, I'm worried about it too. So I mean, I'm just saying there's other ways that uh, issues that maybe we have a concern about might, you know, I mean, maybe we would go and talk to the chief about something, you know, that, uh, so if there's only one avenue for discussion, then I think sometimes you know, that, that limits our ability to be effective because we're not, uh, we're, you know, there are other perspectives that we need, we need to hear, so. So was the manager in this instance saying no to code enforcement? Is that what? No, I, I, no, I, I don't think, it wasn't, an, it wasn't an issue at that time, but I'm just saying, you know, if, if I mean, I think the manager, the, I mean, I had a concern about the code enforcement Okay. And I think the general feeling of the administration at the time was this was the right thing to do, I'm going to go ahead and do it. If I had gone to Chris and said, I'm concerned about this, you know, um, I think he, I don't, it, you know, I think the answer would have been, this is, we're doing it, and this is why we're doing it, and, you know, whereas, and I never would have known that, yeah, Elizabeth, who knows the person and who the issue, also had somewhat of a concern. So, I mean, I'm just saying there are times that, as a trustee, we might want to have, you know, a discussion with the chief or the fire, <laughs> the fire chief or Elizabeth or Rachel or anybody. Or I might, you know, I mean, I'll talk, I go in and talk to Mark about stuff that, you know, it's pretty particular and technical to the stuff he's doing. So, I mean, I just think, I think all of us, to some extent or another, have interaction with department heads, not really anyone, you know, below a department head level, but we do sometimes have interaction <coughs> with department heads, and I just, I, th I see value in that. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that's still... Based on the language, you'd still be able to do that. Oh, right. I, think I don't think, I don't think I have to move Just a point of clarification for this. This is this language was inserted for the primary purpose of clarifying the rules within our organization. So the board is one aspect of our organization, but you know, from um, village manager, department head, staff, um, so that <coughs> when there were issues that did arise, that they were addressed in the appropriate channel of communication on the inside. Not that you're not on the inside circle. <laughs> you know, the, not within the scope of that forum. So um, that was the purpose, the intended purpose, to make sure that when people had issues, that they were being um, directed and approached in the most appropriate way. So there's no intent here to foreclose any kind of conversations we would have with department heads. Or no, but I do think that that. I mean, to Tyler's point, that it is important that we're aware. Um, you know, in the situation that was kind of being described, I would want to know a situation like that. Um, 
I guess there's a little surprise. It's almost like a military organization. I mean, I, a lot of organizations are flattening their hierarchy and having more open communications at all levels. So there's free flow of information. I can understand the value of this, but also balancing against more open structure of your organization in these times. You know, to, to kind of balance on that, one of the things that can occur frequently in an organization is that people will defer directly to me. In times when there should be a step in speaking to the direct supervisor. Um, in fact, that's why this is actually <laughs> inserted within the scope because those those lines of communication need to be laid out. And if it's not clear within this organization, then it needs to be clear. Not because I'm not willing to talk to people. I'm always willing to talk to people. But um, one of the first things, usually, whether it be trustee or employee,